Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling in Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in ZimCat 4. So we'll go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. There are some new things here uh, opening up in the catalog that uh, we'll do bubblings on. And we've taken a look at what's new in the site. And now what I'd like to do is take us through uh, the updates, just general updates. So I'm clicking on the docs and choosing updates. Uh, we co code name this diamond. So Zimcat 4, a diamond. It's the 10th anniversary of CreateJS, which is what Zim, Zim is built on. And so we have our diamond version. So we've um, talked about the easing already in a bubbling. We've got a zaps tool, which we're going to talk about in a bubbling as well. SVG assets. So let's have a look at this. We can now bring in right in the frame in our assets SVG and we were able to do that before but when we did that before that would give us SVG code and we would have to do this um, as uh, like a SVG to bitmap. We would call an SVG to bitmap and we'd have a callback and that would give us our bitmap image based on that SVG. Well, uh, there was a good idea out there. Let's see, did I even credit the good idea? I don't think I, I forgot to credit the good idea. Oh, here it is, cart dealer. <laughs> Thanks for the prompting. Um, there was prompting saying, oh, well, you know, I it was supposed to be easy. How come we can't get an easy, you know, SVG image? And it's because generally we, we don't work with SVG and Zim as much as we work with blobs. We already have like a vector ability with blobs and we make shapes out of blobs if we want. But uh, it is handy to be able to get an image uh, easily from SVG. So now uh, we can. We, we pass it in as any of the asset, like any of our other assets. Uh, and will automatically turn it into a bitmap uh, for you. So there it is, asset and pick.svg.center, and that will at, um, center an SVG object for you. So is this an example here? Yeah, it's a card dealer's card, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and look at the quality of that. Isn't that nice? I zoomed right, right in on that, and it's vector crisp quality on the SVG. And we're bringing that in. So that's great. If you need the SVG, then that's available as a dot SVG property on our asset. So on the bitmap that we make from this, we store the original SVG. Then you could, for instance, pass that in. Oh, um, we, we automatically parse it. So if you do pass in the SVG as a picture into an SVG container. It says, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I know you really wanted to pass in the SV, the raw SVG from that. <laughs> so we were going to have it, so you'd have to put in dot SVG there. But we realized, okay, if, if, if it's a bitmap and it has an SVG pro property, then we'll assume that you <laughs> were intending to pass the SVG into the SVG container. The difference between that is an SVG container uh, turns them into blobs and squiggles and, and transforms all, all of the parts so that you can change that right in Zim. Uh, remember that the SVG in an SVG container, or indeed if we needed to pass the SVG into the um, as, as a path, if we needed to get a path uh, for a blob or a squiggle directly, uh, that is more experimental SVG. It doesn't support styles. Uh, you can style SVG uh, with CSS and parts of it anyway. Uh, but we aren't reading in those styles. So, but however, you know, to, to take in a path, paths generally can be brought into a bitmap or an SVG container like that. But just for pictures, there you go. We've simplified it just like any other image. Time check. Time check now defaults to false. When we moved over to seconds from milliseconds in ZimCat, we've now run five versions. So this is a fifth version because ZimCat started at 00, 01, 02, 03, 04. So we're on four. So after uh, this long, probably most of your stuff has been converted from milliseconds into seconds. So that was giving us, it was checking to see if 
any of your numbers for animation time, for instance, or timeouts or intervals were suspicious looking. <laughs> I gave you had 50 for a timeout. We'd be going, uh, was that 50 milliseconds? We're, we're, we're now using seconds and it would give you this warning. You can turn that back on if you want by setting time check equals true. And then it will uh, warn you in the console if there's any suspicious looking times. But for now, we've taken that away. Mobile frame per second has been set to 60 by default rather than 30. So it had traditionally been 30 for mobile and 60 for desktop. Now devices are faster and tends to look a little bit smoother if we run it 60 frames per second on mobile. ZimKid site has been updated uh, in the slate so that we've got uh, phone and portrait checkboxes. We mentioned that in the site updates. We've talked about keyboards in a, a previous bubbling. The grid, uh, when we made, uh, we're animating, we got an animate tool, easing, custom easing, and we did a bubbling on that. When we made the graph for that, we didn't want to actually put in the little percentages or pixels that usually go along with the grid. So this is a Zim grid we're talking about. And that's so that we can lay out and find, you know, what percent, you know, confirm what percentages things are, uh, sort of predict or say, hey, I want it to be at this pixel location and that looks good. I'll choose 70 pixels. Um, that's what the grid was handy for, for designing. But it's also kind of handy to just have a grid if you, and with the, um, with the easing tool, well, why don't I just show you, take a second here. Where did we talk about the eases there? Ease right here. So this e easing tool, that's a Zim grid in behind here. It's in percentages. And, and note that I don't have something that's following my cursor telling me what the values are. I didn't really think we needed it. Um, so what we've done is made it so that you can set those to false. Why did it allow toggle cache? That wasn't it. Okay, numbers X and numbers Y. If you set those to false, then you won't see them. So here's some general updates. We added drag paused property to objects with drag. So what that means is if you want to stop dragging something, but are going to then want to drag it later. So you're, you're sort of like um, saying, I don't want to drag now, but I'm going to drag later. It's kind of a pain because you would have to remake the bounds later. So if you said no drag, you were stuck. And then when you drag, you have to put in all the parameters again. So this is uh, on the object. If you just say drag paused, that will pause the dragging. So people can no longer drag that. But then if you uh, drag pause false, uh, turn you know take off the paused, then it will go back to the normal dragging. So it basically keeps all the dragging there, but just in the mouse down it says, hey, if drag paused is true, then um, return. Don't don't continue on with the rest of the stuff. We added a corner parameter to a triangle. So uh, that can give us a lot of different shapes now. You can get little humps and stuff like there, you know, weird kind of things like that. Or uh, corners and the corners can be up to three there's three of them there so you can say hey just make them all make them all a corner of five or something like that or ten or you can pass in three different corners to get different corners this one's a cool one thanks Emmy for the suggestion here when we do a series in animate it runs one animation after another and you could add a wait in there to wait before something animates after another one. But Amy had the idea of a negative wait, and that would allow us to animate in a series and have some of those animations happen as the previous animation is finishing or before it finishes. You know, like a, so we've added a negative wait, which means if you on the third one, if you put a negative wait of two seconds, then it will start two seconds before the uh, second one ends. <laughs> Did I say the third one? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, so that's in there. You can use a negative weight. Added a toggle method and property to list when the accordion is set. So we did some accordion work there. Uh, um, 
we can toggle the that allows us to say when we roll off or something we can close the accordion and make it more like a, a pull down like that so that's it and thanks of weird top <laughs> nice name huh? weird top for that um, move to test oh this was uh, bothering us for a little while we lost we lost selecting text when we had allow allow default true you, you couldn't select the text on the page and we didn't know what was going on like it was happening on our dev site and for some reason I, I couldn't select the text in the HTML and finally realized what that was it was a setting that we had in Zim and we worked on that. It relates to uh, touch settings and stuff. But now, unfortunately, it, it seemed to be a one thing or the other. We can't, if if uh, Zim's in a tag on, and the canvas is sitting there on a page, an HTML page, you want to scroll the HTML page. Uh, we had done the setting that allowed us to scroll by, by dragging on the frame. If you drag on the stage or the frame, uh, you could scroll the whole page up and down. Well, uh, when we added that, it took away <laughs> it took away the text selection. <laughs> you know, we didn't realize it. So anyway, it seemed to be a one th a one way or the other. And now, uh, unfortunately, we're back to not being able to drag the stage to be able to scroll a big long scrolling HTML page. You have to sort of drag the side beside or above or below the stage to be able to scroll the page or use a scroll wheel. So um, anyway, uh, that's good. That's been fixed up, but uh, we lost a little bit there. So we're considering it a break. Just have a, a look there. Oh, maybe that was the double mouse events. I, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, that's that's right. Sorry, it wasn't that one. It was it was a double mouse event that was causing that, or the double mouse event <laughs> was causing the the. Um, the scroll issue. So we had, so we, we just fixed the text selection, no problem, but it was the double mouse. We were getting a double mouse click when we could t uh, scroll on the, on the stage. So we removed the scrolling of the stage so that we didn't have the double mouse tap. Okay. That's what it was. My apologies. The dial now has a current value style. Well, you can, I mean, you can come in and read all these. These seem sort of like, I don't know, do I have to read all of these? Um, so there's now a current value property for the dot. <clears throat> that was accidentally left off before. Slider and dial accept V values for min, max, and step and current yeah. value. That means that you can set all of those with uh, like a series or something using styles uh, when you add sliders and dials to a, well, you could always do that with just one slider and dial uh, or sliders and dials on the page. But if you added them to a tile, then you need to be able to, oh, I don't know. Am I just talking blah, blah, blah? Well, let's see, what do we do here again? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Zim V for min max. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could always set min max step individually as, as you go, but if you wanted to do that with style or in, a, in something like a tile of them, then this will allow you to do that as well. Yay! So they also get delay pick, and that means it'll work with tiling. Animate 2 has time for items fixed. Okay, adjusted list. So these are some updates here. I don't know. Like I said, you can come in and read all of the small print here. Oh, new layout. Um, this is kind of handy for us. The layout now we can just pass in uh, the regions or the objects that we're laying out. Before we would always have to put in a, an array of region objects that would have at least the object header, object content, object footer. You could also specify all sorts of things in here like the background colors, the margins, the widths and stuff. <coughs> <laughs> but uh, if you want to just choose default ones, then you can now just pass in the object and it will say, oh, if it's an object, then I assume you mean <laughs> like it just converts this to that. Yay. 
Also, if you outline something, it will now update the outline. So we did find that sometimes you want to outline one of your regions to find out how big its container is and how you're positioning things inside the container. And with the automatic scaling of the layout class, outline was not automatically scaling. Uh, now it is. We've made debug chainable in physics. Uh, the color picker has a selected color parameter along with the existing selected index parameter. So now there's a parameter called selected color. Ooh, we added, we, we adjusted the arrow property of expander, or we, we uh, let's see, we changed the arrow property to expander. Okay, so the arrow, it used to be arrow, true or false, but now we have a plus sign, an arrow, or none. So uh, we can now expand, open an accordion without any symbol in there uh, before you would have to manually sort of remove those symbols. And that makes it look like if you have a pull down list with like just one thing there, you maybe don't want a plus sign or anything, you just want people to press it. Uh, so be it, you know, there it is there. We've uh, fixed up the background colors on that too. And fixed up an ISO or ISO ISO. The ISO example was scaling wrong because we were using the wrong game module on that, so we updated that. We've made changes to the code page, but we talked about that. We made page changes to the site, but we did a bubbling on that. So go have a look. Uh, we've basically added a bunch of bars that will allow you to get into the sections. We've tidied up the sections, done a few changes, all within there. And create JS on GitHub. So we've been adjusting. Uh, go away. We've been adjusting the real create JS. We have access into that now, and so we've made some changes based on issues that have showed up there. One thing we did add uh, as a request was a draw polygon. So there's a draw poly star, but that was very regular, like making stars and and or indeed. Um, pentagons and stuff like that. Actually, poly uh, wraps that. Zim poly wraps the, the draw poly star. But this is a polygon where you can pass in a an array of points and it will join those points together in a polygon or a small thing PG. So that's an addition to easel. We were doing some work with sound as well to get the messaging better there. It was a pain in the neck. Uh, CreateJS test to see if sound is ready to play, but it's doing that test before somebody interacts with the, the thing. So it's popping up a warning saying, we can't play the sound. <laughs> can't play the sound yet. Blah, blah, blah. Stupid warning. So we just added another warning saying, Okay, we're ready to play sound. I guess we are. All we were doing was testing. We weren't even trying to play the sound, but it, it, it we couldn't seem to get rid of that. That try catch that was in there just doesn't work. And so uh, we we just added another warning saying, okay, we're ready. <laughs> just so, so anybody who, any developers who happen to be seeing that are going, oh no, you know, we'll say, oh, okay, we are ready. Um, we've got that issue with the double tapping and the tapping and all that kind of stuff um, has not been worked out inside of the CreateJS repository. That's in the new Zim version of CreateJS 1.3. So it's CreateJS 1.3.3 has it. We're going to test that out, make sure it runs smoothly, and then we'll try and move all of that stuff into the actual CreateJS repository so they have the advantages of that as well. That's all related to a series of touch adjustments that we've made over the last couple of years, as a matter of fact. We'd like to move all that into CreateJS proper. Yay! Okay, those are the general updates. Once again, you can find that at zimjs.com slash updates, or indeed go to the docs, and then updates is right here. If you're following us on Slack and Discord, we always mention uh, where those updates are when we make updates to them. Also watch in those updates as we move along. Uh, right now we don't have any patches, but as we update Zimcat 4, we'll be making some patches to that 
for instance, here's Zimcat 3 that we're looking at now, and I'm just coming down to find out where the patches are for that to show you as an example. Uh, so those were the general updates. We just read through the general updates in Zimcat 4, but here are the patches right here. So there's a fair number of patches to Zimcat um, 3. These are patches that uh, may uh, be additions or uh, fixed some things. Um, not necessarily specifically to Zimcat 3, but any of the Zim features through, throughout uh, Zim's changes. So generally what we do with these things is we will launch a version now. We're, we're more stable, so we're not, we're not launching subversions. Basically, we're launching main versions of Zimcat. So they are kind of like subversions, but they're going to be versions with features. We're not launching versions of Zim with just minor bug changes or sub-subversions. Because we are more stable, there's less of those now, <laughs> in theory. And uh, so our system is, if you want a stable version of Zim, then use Zimcat 3. We're not going to change Zimcat 3 anymore. So, But we will make changes, careful changes, to Zimcat 4 called patches. And after a while, once we sort of finish patching, then we'll launch the Node Package Manager and final GitHub versions of Zimcat 4. So those are a little bit fluid. We're as careful as we can be, and we'll certainly notify you about any changes that might affect your code. But in general, we're trying to make only patches that won't affect your code. All right? But if you really have to have you, uh, you know, stable, stable, then get your own version of Zimcat 4 that you've built with and host it yourself. And that way you won't be uh, affected by any of the patches. Like I said, you shouldn't be affected by any of the patches, but it can happen every once in a while. Or continue to use Zimcat 3 until we launch Zimcat 5. But it, I mean, just grab your own CDN, like your own version of Zimcat 4 that won't have the patches. You can keep up to date with the patches here in Zim Updates. And if there's any patches that you can use or take advantage of, then you're welcome to, you know, implement that as well. All right, that's been a bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night, and we'll see you in the next bubbling. Ciao.